You want to go Scarface times 10, huh? In fact, I'm, that's, <laughs> I'm going to keep that part right there. I just started recording. I'm going to keep that part right there. So, all right, here we go. Hey, it's Joey Allen on the line, guitarist for Warrant. Dude, what's going on, man? You're getting all amped up on coffee, huh? John, I'm in line at Starbucks in Southern California getting amped up at whatever time of the day it is. Absolutely. Pretty much any time is a good time for coffee. Although I, I stay away from it at night because I do like to sleep. But when I wake up, it's all on. Did I just call you John, Mike? Oh, I don't know. I did. My name's Mike. I know your name's Mike. And I'm not a John. Well, I, I have to piss, too, so maybe that's where the <laughs> functional... Well, I thought maybe it was a hooker reference. No, 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 no. I didn't know. You got any hookers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking for some Asian ones, but Don't uh, tell my wife, though, okay? Call Steel Panther. Oh, are they... They got the Asian hookers? Well, they got a song about it. Oh, nice, dude. I gotta check that shit out. I love those. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. All right. So anyway, dude, uh, you know, we've met a couple times here and there. Let's see. I'm going to try to think about this. Uh, I think the first time I met you was uh, Arizona Bike Week. Oh, wow. That was a fun gig. I remember that. I do. You were there. Yeah. And I had to, you know what? I actually had under my radio work shirt, uh, the Warrant Cherry Pie t-shirt. Holy shit. Yeah. So I did kind of a half strip tease on stage when I did the announcement. I didn't do a direct intro for you guys, but I went up there and did some announcing. I unbuttoned my shirt and showed off the cherry pie t-shirt. I remember I remember that. That's one I remember, actually. And then uh, 910 Live, do you remember that one? With the strip uh, club, with the strip club in the front part of it. It was an outdoor was, gig. How long ago was that? Probably about five years. It was one of my headbanger shows. Shit, I don't remember that one. Because <laughs> I think you went into the club. <laughs> I didn't go into the strip club. Oh, I, I honestly don't know. I can't. I, I've I, never been in a strip club ever in my life. I can't confirm or deny that, so I'll, never, ta- I'll, ever, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Ever, dude. What are you talking about? Never, I'm a, ever. I'm a church-going man. The the cherry pie guy has never been in a strip club. I never look at pussy in my life. Never. never. Well, hey, dude, so. When I started thinking about what I want, what I wanted to talk to you about, I was looking. I, you know, I forgot about a lot of the changes that Warrant went through, like with Jamie St. James taking over vocals for a bit, and like Billy Morris on guitar. I remember seeing uh, Warrant with Billy Morris on guitar. I think it was at Ava Amphitheater down here in Tucson. I don't think it was Phoenix, but uh, you know, it's just like, oh wow, oh wow, because my my mind gets foggy. You know what I mean? Hey, Doug, doesn't it all? Foggy. <laughs> um, I uh. I, I left I, when I was in the band from 87 until like 95, and I left, and I came back in 2004. So all the shit that happened in between there, I wasn't a part of. And, you know, my uh, I know Jerry and Eric were in there, and I know Janie was in there and out of there, and there was like 15 million drummers and <laughs> different guitar players. And, and, then, and then in 2004, when I got back, it was pretty much Steven came back after the first gig. Well, the first drummer I played with back in Warren was Mike Pisano. He's a drummer for Tiger Army now. He's a good friend. So, uh, you know, it's all good. Yeah, a lot of changes. Yeah, and again, I really had to start looking up Wikipedia and Google stuff to, to remember it all. Right. And then another another little reminder was the Joey Allen Project. Oh, Jap. Jap. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just going to be totally, totally uh, politically incorrect that, the whole time. We've already dropped the P-bomb. <laughs> uh, so Me Too's coming. Pound Me Too's coming at me. We got uh we got the Jap reference, which I'm not. At, I I love, uh, um, you know Japanese people. I work for a Japanese company actually. And, well, do you yeah, like? Joey, I'll I'll Allen just Project. go down. I'll go down the road you're going the, with the Jap okay. reference. Do you also like Jewish American princesses? Uh, uh, depends on what color their hair is. <laughs> what is your preference? I'm a brunette guy. Are you really? Okay. Absolutely. All right. I got, in, yeah. I got, I personally got into trouble with some uh, a ginger, so you know, stay away from them. Ginger, was she red haired? Yes. Uh, I like, I like red haired women too. I, I think women are beautiful. I, I, I am, uh, you know, I'm a guy. What are you gonna do? So, what happened with the the Jap project, the jo- Joey Allen project? You know, that was one. Um, that was one. That was one that we did uh, after I got out of warrant. And I was trying to get something going because I just wanted to play, you know? 
Yeah. And uh, so I picked some guys in OC, got her friends, and uh, and a buddy up in LA, Todd Lane, is a drummer friend of mine. He's a lefty, he's a good, good lefty, not not as good as Ian Pace, but close. And um, and we just started doing some like OC, like I want to say, kind of punky a little bit. It wasn't really Warren style, more punky beach like punk, you know, just real fast bar chord shit. And then it, and we recorded a really cheap demo, and it just I just got disenfranchised with music for a while. And, stop playing for a few years and that was the that was the end of jap <laughs> and he also went to work for i had originally did you ever work for fender or is I did it not work for fender. or is it just pearl then i work for pearl now i worked for pearl for 14 years right right and which is interesting because everybody of course associates that with drumming and you're a guitar player well we like to we like to throw people curveballs in this world don't oh, the, we? hey there you go ain't nothing wrong with that a little left turn um, here and there yeah, no, Pearl, um, Pearl's a great company, work for great guys, some of the top guys in the industry, number number one company in the world for drums, for sure, um, hands down, hands down, no question asked there, but um, when I got on board with Pearl in 2005, they had um, just taken distribution of an amp line called Hughes and Kettner from St. Wendell, Germany, they're a, a high-end two-man company. Mm-hmm. In and, fact, and you, you have their degree. picture, your uh, cover picture on your Facebook page. There you go. That's my amp. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I got a degree back in the day in, in engineering, and I used to build prototype amps at Jackson Charvel in the 80s under an under a, um, engineer named Paul Gagan. And so when I, I got the offer to be a district sales manager for that line, I jumped at it and did really well. And then after three years, that ended, and they moved me over to the drum selection. And, and um, I've been there ever since. I get to do that and do about 50, 60 gigs a year. So basically, Mike, I work about 70 hours a week, usually, when I'm on the road. Well, I know you're a busy guy, nail, nailing you down for this interview. And, you know, I, you know I, I'm glad I finally got you. So, Yeah, I'm sorry about that. My son, it's been raining out here in California. It's something that not a lot of people understand what the rain is. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so basically, his, he, you know, he's, he's a little dude. He's sick. So he just, he started baseball for the first time. And, um, and the baseball, all the practices kept on getting bounced out because of the rain. And that night we were supposed to talk. I got my, we got a window to go to baseball practice, and I totally spaced it. So I apologize. No, nah, that's totally cool, dude. Family, you know, family's got to come first. Yeah, especially the little man in baseball. Dude. Right. Can't He's take rag. Can't take that away. No, <laughs> dude, it's great. Well, hey, let's go way back. So. You know, I got to be, I'm trying to think again. My my mind is fuzzy. I mean, like last night. So I talked to uh, Jeff Duncan yesterday of Armored Saint and then guitar player Joey Tafoya. They both wanted me to tell you hi, by the way. Love both those guys. Jeff- Duncan, Duncan's the man. I love Duncan and the old Armored Saint boys. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. The Duncan brothers. There's a bunch of those. Yeah, guys DC4. Around. We talked about that, of course. But he had, re- he had to remind me about Joey Vera playing in Fate's yeah. Warning. And I, I just had a brain fart about that, and finally it came back to me. So anyway, fuzzy memory. I, I want to say I bought the first Warrant record based on, because I worked at a record and video store here in Tucson, right? So all my paychecks pretty much went to records. Because I, had, I hadn't graduated to CDs yet, because they were so limited, plus they were expensive, and I was a record guy, right? Right. So I bought the Warrant record, and I'm pretty sure I bought it before I'd heard anything. And then, of course, okay. you know, Down Boys, Heaven... Uh, sometimes she cries. Um, where did Warren all begin before you became Warren? Tell the story. Uh, for me or for Warren? I mean, I know a little bit of the priest. I, both, I was, both. I was the last guy in. I mean, I, I literally was the last guy in the door in 87. So, like, I know that Eric and I, when we were, like, 19 in Orange County, here where I'm driving around right now, um, we were in a band called Nightmare 2, and we played, like, Aerosmith covers and some Kiss shit, like Parasite, et cetera, et cetera, and maybe a few originals. And when we were 19, and then I split that band to go join another band in Orange County, and at that time, Eric split, moved to L.A., and started Warrant. Um, and I think Jerry was first or second bass player in that band, so both of those guys were pretty much in there from the inception um, with three other dudes. And then I was still playing in a bunch of different OC bands. I moved up to L.A. And uh, tell me tell me when this gets too long-winded, Jack. No, no, dude. I'm already uh, digging it, so keep okay. going. 
Okay, and and then um, and then so Warren's doing their thing, and I'm doing my thing, and then the drummer, the original drummer, and and uh, Max, is his name, and Adam, the singer, split wanted to split more and start their own thing, and at the same time, Janie and Steven were in a band uh, called Pl- Plain Jane, and their their bass player and guitar player split, so they were aware of it, and they knew each other. And they, Jerry or Eric, and or Eric, one of the two, put a, do where those guys lived and put, literally put a, you know, a piece of paper, an 8 by 10 on their door and said, hey, we're looking for a, for a drummer and a singer. What do you think? And that's when those two guys came in and the, and the, the lead guitar player at that point was this guy, Josh Lewis, who's a nice guy and a really good guitar player, actually. And, and uh, so it was all of the, it was Steven, Eric, Jerry, and Josh. And then Janie wanted a, wanted a different player in the band and literally I was living in Hollywood still auditioning for a bunch of bands in Hollywood shit because I'd stopped playing with the bands in Orange County and um, I ran into Eric Turner on the corner of Donini and Sunset right across from, from Gil Turner's and uh, liquor store and he's like man we're looking for a uh, we were looking for a lead guitar player What are you, are you interested in? and I was like hell yeah and two weeks later I auditioned and, and, and I got the gig there you go. That was, and then my first gig was uh, March fifteenth, nineteen eighty-seven. Now, see, I appreciate the history lesson because most of that I did not know. Well, that's it. And and I mean, I can't speak for Jerry and Eric and when Warren started, but I know Eric was there, and I know, I'm pretty sure Dixon was like the second bass player, but the first bass player was there from like a rehearsal or something like that. So he was literally the first bass player. Well, so basically, you're you know you're still considered an OG warrant guy. The only guy I've ever really talked to with interviews, like we were we were talking before this started, is you know of course Robert Mason. I've been friends with him for quite some time, back when I met him with uh, Lynch Mob, or as you say, go ahead and say it, Lynch Mob. <laughs> hey man, I love oh. me some Lynch Mob, but when he plays with them, we call him Lynch Mob. That's awesome, man. I gotta, I gotta give you. Once in a while, I go, hey George, you know George gets in a fight with Oni or somebody, and it's like. George wants me to do these gigs, and I'm all, are we gigging? Then he's all, no, and I'm all, go fucking go have fun, dude. You know, <laughs> it's great. George is fucking rad, and why not, you know? Which, by the way, all right, really quick, what do you think about this new project, The End Machine? Well, I've got a name for that, too, Mike. Oh, no, go for it. Well, you got you got uh, George, you got Mick, and you got Jeff, but you don't have Dom Dockett. Right. So if you add in Robert Mason to those three guys, you have Mockett. <laughs> so, oh my god, dude! I mean, I'm probably gonna get a fucking earful of shit. Oh. Hey, look, it's all good fun. Shit, it's, it's, this is dude, like that is classic, right there. Mocking, oh my god, mocking, dude, mocking. I don't think anybody's come up with that, so I'm giving you props. And when it gets out there, you are the man. I'm gonna start picking your brain for. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I'm a sarcastic, I'm a sarcastic like you are, you know. And I try to come up with silly names like that. And oh man, you got me on that. No disrespect to George. No, or, no. Or, or, it's or, all I fun. I grew up on. I grew up, dude. I used to play under lock and key eight billion times on my fucking Walkman back in the day when I was yeah. just, just marveling at George's playing and the songwriting. And then I saw him live, and Jeff is just a monster, badass bass player. Yeah, I'm a big fan, but. Yeah, I mean, you gotta have fun, dude. No, I mean, that's great. I mean, bucket. I've been friends with George since '97. I've been friends with Robert since probably about 2001. I've been friends with Mick now for about 10 years, and you know, Mick is one of my favorite people. That guy is so much fun. Always on 10. Uh, now, no, and so I'm sure you've had plenty of Mick Beams, right? Mick beads. Mick Beams, you know. Oh Mick God. The, Mick likes the Jim Beam, right? Yeah, with like a splash of Coke. Dude, when. When you're on the road with him, you go into his dressing room and he's got a fucking craft of like coffee and it's got ice in it. And I'm like, oh, dude, are you having a nice coffee? He's, no, I'm having a McBeam. And it's, it's like literally like six cups of Jim Beam with a little Coke in there and some ice. Yeah. It's a yeah. yeah. I, I, I never knew that was what it referred to. And, you know, honestly, I've been, I have stopped drinking for almost a year and a half now. But when I did hang out with Mick. When I did hang out with Mick, it was like, oh, my God. Yeah. 
but he's such a cool dude and he's got a huge heart which a lot of people probably if they don't know him personally they don't realize that they think he's just this party animal guy and he is but he's got just a gigantic heart you need an extra liver when you hang out with mick but you don't need any more heart (laughs) absolutely agree with you that's awesome. All right. So anyway, uh, so yeah, we got Robert and those guys. Unfortunately, Mick won't be playing. Will Hunt uh, from Black Label Society and uh, Evanescence. Is it Evanescence that's going to be drumming for the End Machine when they play here in April? Yeah, well, I'm going to go see him at the Whiskey. Will's a badass. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd love to. I wish it were Mick, but I mean, hey, Will is great. I loved yeah. him in Black Label. Yeah, I liked him. He played with Tommy Lee, I think, and then I've seen him. Uh, I've seen him playing another band, which is the guys from. From uh, Seven Dust. Oh, dude, was, another great band right there. What the name of the band was, but the guitar player from Seven Dust, they were in a band and it was badass. Oh, I'd have to look that one up. You're, I'm drawing a blank on that one. Oh, but, my, they were, they were killer. So, back to the whole warrant thing. You know, it, it's interesting what you can find on YouTube these days. And one of the things I found was a live version of Heaven that is different than, than what was on the record. And it was interesting to, because it's like I, I like both versions, but I kind of get where probably the record company directed y'all to maybe do what you you ended up having on the record, or is that wrong? I think that that song in our live shows before we got a deal was a big song for us, and then when we got our record deal, the, the producer and all his mighty knowledge didn't want to record that song. Oh, like at all? At all. Oh my gosh. And we're like, okay. And then when we pushed it, we're like, look, our crowd dig this song. They sing along with this song. You're fucking out of your mind. Uh, he's like the Wizard of Oz, all, 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 you know, all fucking knows all and everything. Oh, every record exec does, don't they? Yeah, he's a producer. He wasn't an exec, but oh, okay. But, well, either way, we, yeah, we just fucking put our foot down and said, dude, we're we're doing the song. So he helped rearrange it to what it was. Oh, and, okay. And I'm sure he's he's fucking digging his, his quarterly checks, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, geez. What, it, yeah. it hit number two, right? It did, only to be trumped by the mighty Millie Vanilli. Ah, well, at least you guys don't lip sync. Um, no, we don't. And that was very evident, unfortunately, in some of those Janie Lane videos where he was so fucked up. Oh, my God, dude. Wow. Which, by the way, you know, it's very sad because I saw Janie, the last time I saw him was he was filling in for uh, uh, Queensryche, right? No, it was actually or no, the, uh, uh, great, great White. Great White, that's right, I'm sorry. Rhymes with, Queens like rhymes with? <laughs> Again, dude, my memory, my memory. So anyway, <laughs> but it was here in Arizona. I remember that. It was actually, uh, oh, I okay, this is what I remember. It was Keel, Great White, and Queensryche. Nice. And it was at a Buffalo Wild Wings parking lot. All right. And it was right around Halloween. But... I went and talked to Janie really quick. He was at the merch booth, and he looked good. He sounded good, and he seemed really happy. And then, of course, what happened happened, which is very unfortunate because that guy was very talented. You know, it's, it's a horrible thing to happen. And, and um, I mean, we were we tried to do the reunion thing with him in 2007, and it just failed miserably. We had a sober coach out there. We've talked about it many times. There was just nothing we could do, and we didn't want to have that guy, you know, die on the road. So we just said, we don't want to do this. Yeah, that would be that would be just horrible. Yeah, it's not worth like everybody goes, Oh, you're just ripping it off. Jeannie's not there. You guys didn't write any of the songs. You're just riding the money. I mean, if we wanted to ride the money, we would have kept him out on the fucking road back then, but we got off the road and didn't do it. You know, because we didn't want the guy to die. He just couldn't be on the road with it. I don't know if that was triggers or what it was. We took all the booze out of the backstage. We we made it we gave him every opportunity to be sober. You know? Uh, AA meetings backstage before shows. <laughs> And um, it's it's horrific when you wake up, you know, and you get that phone call. I mean, I think I got that phone call at about we were at dinner one night on the road, and I think uh, that Robert was in the band, and, and it was just a hor- one of the worst things that's ever happened in our lives, you know. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, yeah, it, you know, it bummed out the the world, but for well, you to have personally been with him for as long as you have and everything, of course, it's going to hit you in such he a. Was, he was a brother from another mother. And, thick and thin and, and and good and bad and ugly and, and great you know we had we experienced just monumentous highs together and some horrific lows together but nobody wants that so yeah he's missed and that's really fucking horrible it's horrible for his kid and I feel bad for his daughters because you know he had a lot of a lot of good a good stuff in him he just had some struggles you know? yeah yeah well uh, I can personally attest to some of that with alcohol. You know, that's why I gave it up, dude. It just wasn't working for me for me anymore, and 
I was able to walk away from it, fortunately. Good. I'm happy to hear that. So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a, an occasional beer guy, and, and but I don't really drink it. I'm, I'm out on the road a little bit. Now, another thing I read, which I did not know, and thank God again for the internet, was Prince actually had some interest in you guys back in the day. Is that true? Yeah, he had, he, he paid for a demo tape we did. Um, we were managed, when I got in the band in 87, we were managed by a girl named Jamie Shoup, who actually came to a gig last year. We haven't seen her for a long time. And I've stayed in touch with her, and, and she was in L.A., and she came out to a gig. It was great to see her. But she managed the band in the early you know, years in 87, before we got a deal, when I was in the band. And she also was very famous for one of the people that brought Prince to the world. And, um, and so their relationship was obviously tight. And she said, I'm managing this, you know, these bunch of these crazy fuckers out in Hollywood. <laughs> I do a demo and he had Paisley Park in front on Warner Brothers. And so he got, I think at the time, like five grand released. Um, and we went into the studio with, uh, I don't know if Stevie Salas did that one. Or if uh, there was another guy that did a bunch of Bonnie Raitt stuff, um, I, I'll sorry, I remember. I don't remember his name, but I, know, I just remember when he was Mick the Idiot Blow. And uh, so <laughs> Prince liked the demo tape, and then he wanted to see us live. So this was back in the day of VHS, and we sent, we recorded one of the shows I think at the Country Club and sent it to him, and he he passed because he, he didn't see what he wanted to see out of the live show. That's interesting because from what I've seen from way back in the day, like uh, that the video I saw of the different uh, heaven arrangement, you guys were pretty well choreographed and stuff, the spins and the doing this and that. And that was, that was, I mean, honestly, that was the cool, that was cool back in the day. Right. So. Yeah. That producer's name, by the way, I just remembered Ed Cherney. Love you, Ed. He's a great guy. <laughs> um, anyways. Uh, yeah. We had our live show tight with all that. Chore- That's so funny. <laughs> I, I, I honestly wish we'd do more of that now just because people trip on it when we do it. Like right. Cowboy thing, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I laugh about that shit. We had a lot of energy, man. I mean, we were going Well, let me ask you this. If you got down on your knees and started playing, are you going to be able to get back up? <laughs> Not without some fucking help. Bro. Right. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. That'd be hilarious. Okay, so that's the Prince story. That's pretty cool. And. Man, you know, so many people, uh, I don't think, realize what a great guitar player he was. Dude, he's fucking epic. My he's God. The guy was good at everything he did, bastard. Well, Definitely. yeah, I mean, he had, you know, from when he first came out to his, you know, various different, I'm not going to say incarnations, but just his styles, you know, the different music he produced or put out, it was it was amazing, dude. I never got to see him live, man. I'm, pr- I'm pretty bummed about that. But yeah, there's there's guys that there's guys that can sit in their bedroom and noodle for eight to nine to ten hours a day and get really fucking good and play really fast and do all kinds of shit. And then there's guys like Prince that probably didn't do as much of that and just had it to begin with. Sure, he practiced. Don't get me wrong, and that was what he did for a living. But when a guy can take one note and bend it and make hearts melt. And you got another guy playing eight billion notes that can't fucking, you know, get a guy to call him back. Then you got somebody that's special, and he was he was one of those guys, you know. Dude, that's a great analogy. I've used that before, like with Gary Moore. He could hold one yeah, note. He could hold one note and blow away the guy ripping out ten notes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Just, and make you cry and make yes. you laugh and make you happy all on yes. the same note, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's a gift. And that's, that's another. That's, an- that's another that's one. like God given to me. That's something that you don't hear born with. Well, that's another one of my favorite guitar players I never got to see live, but I've got so many incredible bootlegs, uh, including one that he that was broadcast from here in Tucson on the Wild Frontier uh, tour. Oh, rad. Yeah, oh, I got, I got so. That, I got that CD. So good. Uh, yeah. Probably one of the best. Of, corridors of power. Oh, dude, that, that Victims of the Future and even the blues stuff. I mean, pretty much everything. That guy could play anything. Jazz, fusion, flamenco. You know, Black Rose from Thin Lizzy. Oh, Dad. Thin Lizzy. Give me a break, man. Jeez. Love them. Yeah. All right, so now i got to back up here. Let's see. Where the hell? That's the Prince story. Now, another thing, <laughs> and, and if I don't know if I remember this or not, but I found it interesting. Again, we go to record companies, execs, producers, all that, and they, you know, they pretty much call the shots a lot of the time. Is it true that Cherry Pie was originally going to be titled Uncle Tom's Cabin? See, 
<clears throat> I, I've heard that story, and I don't remember that. So I probably, I mean, I'd have to ask Jerry and Eric. I don't remember that. I remember at one point the second record was going to be called Quality You Can Taste. Is and what? Is what? Going to be called Quality You Can Taste. <laughs> I remember. I remember that being thrown around because we we saw it on some In and Out Burger thing or something. And we were. I, I actually like it. that. Put some hot chick on the front of it. Just be like as tongue in cheek as we could. I think that should be yeah. your next album. Yeah, right. That'll go over good. Yeah, a bunch of like fifty something, you know, hair <laughs> bands, you know, total pedophile vibe. Right? Well, yeah, yeah. Not now with the with the pound of me too movement out there. Probably wouldn't be so good. Yeah, that's just probably a would, probably wouldn't end well for us. <laughs> well, so uh, anyway, uh... yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I guess I just don't remember that. Okay. Yeah, because I really hadn't heard anything about that, but then I read it and I thought I'd bring it up to you. But let's get to the whole cherry pie thing. I mean, you know, I, did you ever really regret having done that song? I mean, come on, it's an anthem, dude. No, I never had any regret. I still don't. Every night I play that song. The only thing I regret is it's a fucking beast of a song to sing background vocal to. <laughs> so you're like, next damn it. You, next time you hear that song come on, just sing the fucking chorus. Sing every chorus and tell me when you're done with that that you're not out of breath. And thank God you have Steven back there doing the high parts, right? Yeah, I mean, but everybody in my band sings. We're not we're not tracking shit live. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it's like it's it's you have to sing that shit, and uh, that ain't an easy one. That's the only thing I regret is that when we did that song, being as anthemic as it was, it was just tons of backing vocals, and that's really hard to do live. You know, you've got three and four parts. Well, there's. You know, there's one thing. Hindsight is twenty twenty. At this point in a lot of musicians' lives, they probably look back when they recorded and said, you know, we probably should have tuned down then. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I mean, it just was It was the flavor of what the music was around. So well, just... yeah. Everybody was standard tuning for the most part. Yep. Some of it Some of it was up, pitched up a little bit, actually. There are, you know what, there are, I have, I've, because I do some production with uh, right. my day job and stuff like that, not like producing uh, musical bands, but doing audio production. And I've read about, like, like some of the Def Leppard stuff was pitched weird. And that's kind of interesting. Def Leppard, dude, Phil Collins told me some shit about doing, like, hysteria where they do one fucking guitar string at a time. Just this beating that Mutt Lang put them through. Um, you know, and, and and I'm not. I'm thinking to myself, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna tune it up a little pitch, you know, that's okay. But Def Leppard got their asses kicked by him. <laughs> well, the reason, another thing that I'd read, and maybe I, you can tell us about this or tell me about it, but was Janie the one that was really regretful about Cherry Pie? And again, this was something I read and then started watching a little bit of video from way back in the day, like that VH1 stuff. I mean, did it affect him at all, or? What they did is they he went and did an interview when he was had a little bit of booze in him, and you know they just asked him a question and, and you got a guy that's written shit like Rainmaker and Uncle Tom's Cabin and some really cool shit, you know, um, deep tracks off of some of those records, stuff off Doggy Dog, you know, all your yeah. all my bridges burning or Quicksand or Andy Warhol was right, all this type of songs like that, and then everybody remembers him for the biggest hit that we had, which was Cherry Pie, you know, it wasn't the biggest charting hit, but everybody remembers that, you know? Yeah. Due to that in the video, and and, and I'm sure it kind of bugged him in a way, you know, he never talked about it to us, but I think at the end of the day, like I said, you know, same thing about the producer is that he didn't mind getting the checks, you know, <laughs> so I'm sure it didn't bug him that bad. I mean, hindsight's 2020, you know, I'm sure he would have loved to be, you know, Fucking Bruce Springsteen. He was just the guy that that wrote really good songs for the time, and he was in a genre that that's what it was, you know. But um, you know, so uh, you know, I still think it's a fucking great song. Oh, it's and a great song, song because I mean, did you did you play. did you think at the time it would stand the test of time the way it has? My perspective at the time was let's <clears throat> get this record fucking done and go on the road. <laughs> Yo, I've been, I've been home too long. Let's go. Right. You know, there's certain songs that just will never go away, and there's nothing, you know, some, of course, you're like, oh, my God, why won't this song die? That, personally, to me, is not one of them. Another song that will never go away, and it's so funny because talking with Steve Lynch from Autograph, Turn Up right. the Radio was originally going to be called Turn Up the Cassette Player. Wow. I'm not kidding, dude. I'm like, 
That's what the record company, and again, the record people, that's what they wanted, but they insisted on turn up the radio. And look All where right. it is. I mean, radio, you know, there's satellite and blah, 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 but radio really is never going to die, dude, at least not in our lifetime. All right. And there yeah, they I'm have, fine. that's their anthem. Yep. Yep. But could you imagine? Turn it up, turn, turn it up with Steve Lynch. Turn it up. <laughs> turn right. up the that's cassette player. The, the beginning of that song is fucking epic. Steve's a great player. I remember that that black Charvel with the with the yellow fucking Geiger counter going on it. You know the little yeah little, uh, yeah that's bitching. Well, he's a super nice guy too. I've gotten to know him over the past couple of years and sat down, talked with him, talked with him on the phone. Super, super, super nice guy. Yeah, I worked in Jackson when when that song was fucking rocking in East Houston to Jackson, and so when I saw him on that, we did a cruise and they were autograph was on it with Danny singing and. And I sat down next to him, and I'm like, dude, I go, I was the guy at Jackson that sat in that front room and built amps and did all the guitar electronics. You know, and here I am sitting next to him, bald, like 40 pounds heavier, and he's like, and I go, I've been in Warren, and he goes, oh my God, I remember, you know? It was just cool. He's a nice guy, super nice guy. Yeah, he really is. No attitude, no ego. I mean, maybe back in the day, but it's sure as hell not now, dude. No. And no. I doubt well, he had. I doubt he had it back in the day. All the attitudes been blown out of all of the assholes that are still alive, dude. You know, another still thing. still got the good attitude for the live shows, but nobody's an asshole, really. There's a few, but not a lot. Well, I don't know. That Robert Mason feller can kind of be a dick sometimes. Singers are fucking totally different animals. Every <laughs> singer I know is just an asshole. And, and, and I swear to God, if I didn't need him, you know, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> it's, Robert, it's, I, love, I loved him. He's a brother from another mother. It's... So, you know, go ahead. It's that LSD, you know, lead singer disease. They got to have a little bit of that to be good, brother. I got to I think you. that, I think you're right. I think you're right. It's, 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 it's how much of it comes out though. And again, we're messing around with Robert. He's been, yes, of course. he's been a, a friend for, you know, quite some time. And dude, that guy can sing. Uh, George referred to him as Robert the robot because he would come out and just night after night after night, just hits those notes and he just does it. Yeah, well, maybe if George was more like Robert, he'd be playing arenas. No! <laughs> um, no, I'm just joking, George. I love you. Um, Robert is a machine. Yeah. And and not very many singers is, are. Is not he very the... many singers take care of themselves like he does. I love him like a brother. Is he the end machine, though? Is that the reason they have machine in the end machine? Because of Robert. Thought, dude, are you talking about mocking? <laughs> Oh, dude, you got to throw that in there again. I love it. I love it. So bad. I'm, I'm so sorry. No, that's I'm not. That I am, is, but I'm not. That is awesome. All right, so when I was watching that video of Janie you know, being all bummed out about the cherry pie thing and stuff, another thing came on with D. Snyder where he was like, oh, the acoustic stuff. Come on, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, man. I don't know. Did D, D talk shit about us? No, not you guys in particular. It was just the whole era of, uh, oh, well, specifically, he talked about Tesla. Oh, that's and, too bad. And Tesla's the a great band, and their, their acoustic shit was great. The, yeah, the five-band acoustic jam. Let me tell you something. Doing acoustic, doing these songs that are, like, anthemic and even, you know, the way they were produced with all the guitar and drums and big vocals, doing them acoustically is a fucking beating. And I, I, I could fucking care less. I hate it. If somebody says, here's fucking a million dollars to do an acoustic show, it'd be like, okay, but I really don't want it because it's just really hard to do. You know, nobody in this band's James Taylor. Nobody, you know what I mean? And we're just not, we're not wired that way. Granted, a lot of the songs that are out there, like I Saw Red and Heaven, can be done with one guy on an acoustic doing it or, or me playing with Robert. But it's just not meant to be shown that way. So I get what Dee's saying. I don't think, he prop, Dee's a great guy. I don't think he meant any disrespect to anybody, but just saying, fuck, turn that shit up. That's the way it was recorded in the first place, you know? Now, see, I... You know, I not I, his East Coast self, you know? Well, I personally don't mind a little bit of acoustic here and there. Like, but I, okay, I will say for this, absolutely, I like, a, you know, loud electric guitar. But there, it is sometimes cool to hear a different arrangement. Because, like, for instance, so the radio station I work for down here, we have a show called The Acoustic Storm that comes on before me. So when I drive in, I can listen a little bit. And I've heard some really cool acoustic arrangements of some songs that I love electric as well. But I can only take so much of it, right? You're, it's like you really gotta, you really gotta work hard at rearranging songs and playing them. I can you imagine. Know, I can imagine adding some sauce to an acoustic because it's so just raw and honest that you can't, 
there's no hiding anything where you can hide with a loud electric guitar with a little delay, you know? I mean, there's... there's just, <laughs> yeah. You know? Put some chorus on that, Joey. Put, put a little wash on that. <laughs> there you go. And then back to D, you know, of course, I've met him a couple times. I like him and stuff, and I know what his sense of humor can be like. In fact, something came up where uh, he played Badlands, and he mentioned... You know, two of the four players, he pl- he mentioned uh, Ray, well, Ray, Jake, and he didn't, uh, I don't think he mentioned Eric Singer, I can't remember, but he said, and that guy that played bass or something like that, dope! You know, he made a joke about it, but boy, it pissed off a lot of people, because I'm personally friends with Greg Chase on. I saw Greg in, in January at NAMM, and he's been doing this high to me at the booth, and I know he's got a shop out there, and he's a good dude. And, but, and that, bad, that first Badlands record, I, 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 I no disrespect to D, but I'll throw it up against any Twisted Sister record. Well, dude, honestly, uh, the the three of them, uh, Voodoo Highway, Dusk, and of course Badlands, you know, with High Wire on it. Oh my God, dude! Dreams yeah. in the Dark, Winter's Call, yeah, uh, and Ray Gillen. Holy crap, dude! They're another loss, you know, to the music yeah. world. What a great voice. Yep, yeah, agreed. Great. All right, so anyway, I don't want people bashing on us about D. Snyder or anything like that. So we're just no, going no, up. no. I love D, but I love D. Right, right. So that's why I'm putting it out there because people will take something out of context, you know. Oh, uh, uh, hey, from my West Coast ears to their East Coast ears, fucking relax. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, now I gotta know because I don't think I've ever heard the actual definition. But what the hell is a down boy? That's a good question. Shit, I don't have an answer. <laughs> Um, huh. I don't know, man. I mean, the down boys go down, so maybe it's just a bunch of a group of. If I say this, see, the pound me too movement's going to come after me, and then my wife's going to hear this and go, "Honey, really? Uh, you know?" So I mean, just just uh, figure it out. I'll put a I'll put a disclaimer on this. <laughs> it's going to have. We're we're living in a land of politically incorrect. Dude, I'm apolitical. In so many different ways. So many different no, it, ways. I, I listen, I'm not gonna get political at all. I'm just saying that, you know, I'm I am a I am a man that loves women. I've got a twenty seven year old daughter and I respect women just like I respect men and that's all there is to it. But in the early years of, of Warrant there was certainly a lot of sexual connotations. It was always meant tongue in cheek, it was never meant misogynistically at all. <laughs> just watch the cherry pie video, right? Well, you know, that was that was a, a, a director, Jeff, uh, oh, oh, what was his last name? I should know right off the tip of my tongue. Jeff, Je, let's just call him Jeff, because that was his name, his first name. See, brain farts, old. I know, they're horrible. He did the Tom Petty video with the sliced cake on the, the chick, the Alice in Wonderland. Um, I'm looking uh, it up right now, let's see. Yeah, I'm just like blank. Jeff Stein, <laughs> Jeff Stein. Sorry, Jeff, okay. getting old. <laughs> So uh, that was his treatment. That wasn't my treatment. I didn't write that video. I just went, did what I did in it, you know? You were directed. I was directed. Cheney picked a girl out of a book because he was single and he wanted to get uh, get to know somebody better. And how, how is that for politically correct, huh? And, uh, <laughs> and that's how that whole thing started. So he actually didn't know Bobby Brown prior to that, and then they met on set, or? Yes. He oh. picked her. I think he saw her on TV. And he picked her out of a book of like you know, five hundred hot chicks. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Meeny, meeny, miny, mo, right? Look at this book. Pick a hoe. You never got to know her. Was she a, was she a cool chick? <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, I mean, I got along with her. I wasn't married to her, you know. Right. I don't. I don't know. I can't speak for their marriage or anything. She was always nice to me, and you know, everybody in this band has always been kind and cool, and and she seems to to have a have a some kind of a Thing out for us for some reason, even being what she was his first wife out of three, I think. So I don't, I don't know why. I, I you know, whatever. She never went Tawny Katane on you, did she? No, Tawny. Tawny's always been cool too. By the way, I've hung out with her. But um, everybody, you know, everybody's nice. I'm all happy. Everybody's cool. So we don't know what a down boy is. Okay, now let me ask you this. So with the, Robert's been in the band now, what ten years? Yep. Pretty much, right? Because I remember when yep. he got the gig too. So I was thinking back. So like yep. I said, he used to come in on my show up in Phoenix quite a bit, and then he got that gig, and I was very happy for him because, you know, the thing about Robert, and I, I say this with all due respect, he's he's always been like the second guy, right? You know, Lynch Mob had Oni, and then Robert. Warrant had Janie, and then Robert. Cry of Cry of Love had the whatever guy, and then Robert. Right. But 
he's so freaking good and everything. And I know probably in the beginning, especially, you know, you guys probably get a lot of feedback from your fans about, oh, he's not Janie, blah, blah, blah. But are they pretty fairly accepting now? I, I would like to think they are. Right. I mean, you still have got him, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he does a killer job. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. What is next for Warren? When's the next record coming out? Because I think we're kind of due for one here. <clears throat> we uh, barely survived the last one. Usually when we make a there's, there's a, uh, you know, there's a process that we all go through. And then, you know, we make the record. We bitch and fight about songs that are getting added and what songs are going to be on the record, whose songs are we recording, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, after we get through that and bitch about the mix because the lead guitar is not loud enough or the fucking vocals aren't loud enough or the bass isn't loud enough, blah, 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 blah. And then if you come out on the other side of that as a band, you're okay. <laughs> and that's what we go through. So I, I actually think some guys are starting to write and talk about it. Um, you know, right now we're really concentrated on doing the 30 panels about Filthy Stephen Rich, which came out 30 years ago, January uh, 24th or something. And uh, so we're going to fire that tour up this year and probably write and maybe this fall we get back into the studio, but that's about it, man. Just we're all brothers. We get along good. It's functional. Um, you know, after 30 years, we're starting to, the songs are starting to sound good live. Um, <laughs> after 30 years, finally. <laughs> and that's it, dude. And get, get Steven. Steven's been on for a while with some personal stuff, battling a little prostate cancer, but I'm glad to say that he's, he's cancer free and he'll be back with us in, uh, in March. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So that's it, man. Just have some fun. <laughs> well, that, that leads me to the next question. What is this cameo thing? That's some program that... that I mean, I know what it is, but how did you yeah. guys get involved? Because did that. there's all these, Turner. like, housewives and fucking Snooky, Snooky or whatever from Jersey Shore. <laughs> it's, 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 it's... Everybody's trying to monetize everything nowadays, dude. Correct. They don't sell records anymore. People steal your music... They don't want to pay for it, so there's you've got to find a way to make a living. Yeah, and so you're monetizing everything, you know. Yeah, um, and sometimes it doesn't go over well with people, and sometimes it, it just is what it is. I mean, we do meet and greets at shows and charge people. It, it, a lot of people might think that's shitty, and that we should be able to be approachable, and we are approachable. You know, I mean, if somebody stops me on the on the, oh no, you always told me to know? fuck off, Joey. You'd be like, oh, fuck you, dude. Fuck you. Yeah, it's because you never approached me with a beer. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, man. A Corona yeah, and a yeah. lime, damn it! Jeez. That's right. I got Corona it, light, baby. I gotta watch my weight. Well, what's <laughs> you and me both, dude? Oh my god. <laughs> um. So, well, what was funny is you guys are kind of having fun with the video I saw that uh, it was up on your page or wherever it got posted. But some of that cameo stuff, I looked at it. Some of it's kind of cheesy, but other I think is cool because this goes back to where you could pay for a rock star to make a phone call. Oh, that's old school, yeah. You know what I mean? And now it's yeah. actually a video. And you guys, I looked it up, 75 bucks. You know, that's reasonable. It's not this $350 for, like, you know, the Jersey Shore chick or whatever. Right, yeah. So, and then to the meet and greets, you know, I looked up, honestly, I looked at all the packages that uh, Warrant offers and, like, the the sound check and all that. But the one where you guys actually get somebody up on stage to jam, has that turned into a train wreck or has that gone pretty good? It's gone good, man. We get people up there, and, and usually it's singers. Um, it's never been a drummer yet. Really? Which is the only thing that you'd have to really watch out for, because if it's a guitar player, you still got Eric and, up, up and I Eric and I up there playing and plugged in. So, no, it's fun, man. And, and the guys come off stage, and they're so stoked, and they're like, fuck, you know, and if it's, if it's wherever it is, it's usually at a big venue where there's like three or 4,000 people, like a mini arena, you know? Yeah. So, dudes are getting to do that. They're stoked. Oh, know, it's well, a once in a lifetime thing. Absolutely. I I'm totally down for that. I was just you know wondering if it had ever turned into a train wreck for you because I personally you know I I always call it a clam fest when I play guitar. But <laughs> I got a jam with uh, Frank Hannon and Carlos Cavazzo at a birthday party of mine, and it's oh, a blast, great. dude. Just at a club, not in front of a lot of people. Right. You know, three four hundred people. But yeah, yeah. it was freaking cool. And I look back at those pictures. I'm like, holy crap, dude. I mean, first of all, being a radio DJ, I never thought I'd get into radio growing up because I was like the metal guy. I wrote a column in the high school paper called Mike's Metal Shop. And I was, nice. the, I was the feature editor. And ever since my sister got me into rock and roll, dude, I've just been a rocker. Now I appreciate all styles of music, but I am the headbanger rocker guy. 
So to not only become a radio DJ and now have a brand, I've got a freaking T-shirt that like David Ellison of Megadeth has worn. Um, you know, David's from, a great guy. From He's David Ellison guy. to Juan Garcia of Body Count to you know Fred Corey of Cinderella. I got to get you one, Robert Mason. Yeah, yes, I do. Robert I Mason. A, I need a black one. Do you have thinning black? Do I have what? The thinning black shirts, the ones you put on that make you look skinnier. I yes, because yeah, I, need... I have to have that personally. Okay, I yes. need one of those. I'm with yeah. you, bro. So right. anyway, to not only become a radio DJ where I'm at, but also to meet all these people and not only meet them, but become friends with them and then get to know the people that wrote this music. I'll tell you, dude, it makes me appreciate the music even more because you kind of, you, you, you just, does that make sense to you? No, we appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, I've got. I've, I, I'm a music fan, so when I meet guys that I grew up listening to, I get it. You know? Right, it's right. Always, so. It's a pleasure when they're cool and and they're appreciative, and and it's not a pleasure when they're dicks. And, and <laughs> yeah, you got that. You catch right. him at a shitty. You catch him at a shitty time. But it's like happens, I'm going to kick you know? his the, ass. The bottom, the bottom line for me is just it's got to be fun, and that's where Warren's at nowadays. Well, you guys have always been yeah. a fun band. I mean, you guys joke yeah. around. I remember when, like, at the Arizona Bike Week thing, we did a backstage little deal, and we were taking pictures and stuff, and uh, Jerry Dixon talking like a Georgie accent, you know, messing around. Get over here, and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but anyway, back to the around. whole the whole meet and greets and all that stuff. You know, for uh, to get an opportunity, and plus back in the day, let's be honest here, you had to be a hot ass chick to get a backstage pass and meet anybody for the most part. Now you're given the opportunity for fans, anybody, you know, to be yeah. able to do this and to get up on yeah. stage could be absolutely a dream come true for people. And like I said, that I had the opportunity to get up and jam with those guys, and I can look back at these pictures. I'm just like still like, holy crap, yeah. that happened. It's fun stuff, right? Fun stuff. So there you go. If you yep. could jam with anybody, who would you jam with that you've never jammed with before? Well, I'd, I'd love to play a Thin Lizzy song, you know, but that ain't never going to happen. Um, there's just a lot of bands. Cheap Trick would be one of them. Oh, dude, wouldn't that be cool? You know? um, just a lot of bands I grew up on, probably a lot of the same ones you grew up on, you know? All right, there's there's three things that I'm going to work on here. We're going to find okay. out what Down Boy is. We're, yes. we're gonna get a, we're gonna get a drummer to jam with uh, Warrant on stage because you haven't had a drummer yet. Okay, let me know when that is, and I'm just gonna be sick. <laughs> I'm gonna get you in with Cheap Trick, damn it. <laughs> okay, I, I'm friends with those guys, so I, I haven't asked. That. In fact, we played a gig with them a few years ago in Toledo, and they had all the opening bands up to play a song. And when they were doing that, I was in my dressing room looking for a beer. Ah, oh, no way. Dude, am I an asshole or what? I yeah. mean, I was just kicking myself. But yeah. anyways, there'll be a time, hopefully. Bucket list stuff. Well, I'll help facilitate that in any way I can, Joey Allen. I'm, I'm a facilitator. Love it, Mike. Love it. <laughs> hey, anything else you want to mention? I think I've run through everything I had. Just keep a look on warrantrocks.com. We're on Facebook. Um, Eric, I think, and Robert are on Twitter. Warrant's on Twitter. Warrant Rocks, I think, is on Twitter. And- and I'm horrible at all that shit. I'm on I'm on Facebook, but I'm busy as shit, so I'm not on it a lot. I put gigs there, and that's it, man. Thank thank you for the support of having me on and, and keeping this alive. And uh, thanks for all the people that come out and keep it alive as well, man. We really do appreciate it. We have a lot of fun. Well, you guys keep on doing what you're doing too, man. We will. You bet. Even if it's 120 in Phoenix. <laughs> some hot shit there i'll tell you well Love dude teams. that's why there's the swimming pool man just jump right in guitars don't like water brother well that is true <laughs> we could work on a waterproof guitar there you go well cool dude i appreciate the fact that uh, finally nailed you down uh the trifecta of jays this week has come to fruition jeff duncan nice. joey tafoya and joey allen boom awesome all done you've done it now next week go for the m's <laughs> yeah, all right well i do go through i went through bass players i had one week of bass players another week of uh drummers so yeah you know i'll come up with another theme there you go rock and thank you for having me on man i really appreciate it <laughs>